a quick review of my gear. I got my little cooler, it's locked on. This is my utility bag, it's a dry bag. That's like my oven and my stove, my fuel canister, um, my level one charger. I didn't bring my level two charger this time because I was pretty sure I wouldn't need that. And um, not much else, it's pretty empty in there this time. There's the back of the car. Oh, getting a lot of glare. So, my bedding. This is in the sleeping arrangement. The bedding is on the right, as you can see. My thermos is tucked in the corner. My water and beverages are tucked in the other corner. So this way I can just pop a trunk and get out these things. And then the bag of tea on the front left. Dobro. Music book. This is my clean dishes. So when I'm sleeping, I tuck my flashlight here at the end, and I tuck, I leave my keys here at the other end, so I can find these things real quick, like in the dark. Now I have uh, I've rearranged for driving, and pulled the duffel bag up from behind the seat. I was using it to fill the gap between the the, the back of the car and the seat for sleeping. Now the duffel bag goes back here. Driving. Uh, this time I've been stashing my dirty dishes and my dirty laundry behind the passenger seat, also. This time I brought a crate. I've experimented with various baskets, crates, things to put on the passenger seat since I'm traveling alone usually. And, um, you know, places to put little things. So you see, I have my, my shoulder bag my electronics, my small musical instrument things, uh, my travel goat, that's Ska. Ska, whoa, whoa Ska, hi Ska, good morning. Ska the travel goat. On the floor, passenger seat, I have my uh, shower kit, toiletry bag and stuff like that all in a bag so I can grab and go. And, uh, more electronics because of uh, video blogging and my bucket full of uh, cleaning supplies and rags and such. But, you know, something I find is helpful is to, to do things in a consistent manner so you know where to find stuff. So most of the stuff I pack more or less the same every time, but then I do try to make improvements. Food and drinks is behind the driver's seat. And that's handy because I can actually reach back and grab a bottle of tea or something while I'm driving. And then my clean dishes are right behind, you can see behind the driver's seat. Right now my boots are stashed kind of under my uh, front driver's seat. And this time I packed the little things in the door in such a way that they wouldn't rattle. It's much more pleasant that way. Well, I'm driving the iPad, my tablet goes in this crate too. So the thing about the crate, you know, keep your little things from just kind of go, going everywhere. Especially, you know, when you have to hit the brakes suddenly because some jerk has pulled right in front of you and passed traffic or something. You saw that happen on my last trip. But it is, you know, probably happens to you like every day, you know, everybody knows there are people who drive like that. So, you know, rather than have all my stuff go flying onto the floor of the car every time, you know, the crate kind of helps contain it and, um, you know, hold things so that I need to get at quickly or that would otherwise just sort of get lost in a mess in the car. You can see my work gloves stashed there, right, uh, right next to, kind of under the driver's seat. I also have fluorescent ones in case of an emergency, I guess. The gloves are handy. They keep your hands clean when you're in a situation where you're not going to be able to wash your hands or where a wipe isn't going to cut it. Uh, here next to the passenger door, I mean passenger seat, you can see a hiking pole that I'd fill the gap because I didn't bring my laundry kit. I wasn't planning to do laundry or dishes on this trip because I figured I can do that when I get home. And it's a short trip. Um, something to keep in mind, you know, every trip I take I ask myself, you know, what did I bring that I did not use? 
I'm not talking about you, Stella. What did I bring that I did not use? And what did I wish I had? And this happens every trip. You bring things that you don't end up using. Maybe next time you leave them at home. Or, and you, and you don't have things that you would have liked to bring. So, for example, on this trip, I have not used my hiking pole. So, trip's not over. And this is something to assess at the end of the trip. Uh, last trip, I really wished for my laundry bag. <laughs> I had left it home. And I brought a bunch of optimistic stuff, like musical instruments, to play at the beach. And then it was too cold to play them. And, you know, I ended up playing some of them, but not others. And, um... You know, I pack pretty well because I've done this a bunch, but, um, you know, there's still still ways to improve. And this trip I wish that I had brought my um, fire pit. I have a little metal portable fire pit that smokes a lot less than a, than a ring of rocks. And I was kind of wishing for that. Maybe I could have brought some candling too, but I, I found candling. That's, that's okay. I bought firewood. Here I am in twist. So I went to Mazama, I went camping for the night, and then I came back to Twist, as was my plan. There's the charger, there's an, a wall outlet, looks like uh, part of it's in use, uh, but there's a, there's a bolt charging, and they didn't check in on the app, and so I have no idea uh, who's volt or how long they'll be and then there's uh, somebody working over here and their dogs came over and threatened me they were growling at me and you know they didn't care I told them their dogs were threatening me they didn't care dogs are no longer threatening me but that's because I threatened them back which is always risky anyway I have enjoyed my stay at this place in the past, not enjoying it today between the dogs and the unavailable charger. Well, that's just how it goes, you know? Probably it's somebody who has a, a studio here or works here or something charging their car. A neat place full of artist studios and workspaces. There's a pub, you know, but uh, hanging out and waiting to see whose car it is and how long they're going to be, you know, hanging out, waiting until they vacate the plug. Well, you know, they might think, no, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just, I'll just sit here all day. I mean, I have no idea how long these people are going to be on the plug. Um, so I don't think it's really going to work out for me here. You know, I wanted to sit on the grass, play some music, that kind of thing. But, uh, not with dogs scaring me. <laughs> so I'm gonna try some alternative plan here. Well, I'm still at Twist Works. And Twist. I got a nice nest for the swallows at the farm for a nice nest over there. Plenty of room on the luggage rack. I wasn't planning to shop, but, um, you know, I like the attention to detail and I like the work and this nest and I was uh, looking for such a thing for the farm. But there are those violet swallows out there, which are just stunning. Patrick, that nice nest, knew whose volt that was and asked them if they could move it because they're going to be here all day, so it's no big deal to them to move it. So that worked out. Now... Elise is charging on the plug and uh, feeling a lot better about the place, though the, I'm not so sure about the dogs. You know, not everybody likes to have a dog they don't know come running up to them. I'm one of these people. I've been bit like three times, I think. I'm losing track at this point. You know, I've done a lot of cycling. Bicycling on county roads used to be my thing. I did that for a long time, you know, decades. And, you know, invariably I have been chased, harassed, threatened, and bitten by dogs. And, you know, I take this kind of seriously. I know a lot of people might think I'm overreacting or something when someone's dog comes up to me and growls. That's not that I don't like dogs. I mean, that's not what I'm saying at all. Anyway, 
Here's some metal work. <laughs> Nicer than just staring at the charger like that. Some herbs. Oh, it looks like lavender. And a cool old trailer. That's, that's been here a while. I've seen that. It lives here apparently. Spartan Art Project. No idea what that is, but I guess you could Google that. Plenty of uh, solar arrays here and sculptures and gardens and uh, you know the, the pub is a friendly place. Of course I'm here in the morning so it's not open but you know, it's not a morning drinking kind of place. <laughs> anyway next stop uh, shower. So here's the place I was talking about. Wash works, laundry, showers. And a uh, little power vac over there too. You know some some smart person figured out that there's a market for showers. You know, think about it. Homeless people, people who live in their cars, people who live in a shack without a shower, you know, people who don't have running water but might have a home, travelers, you know, any number of people might actually pay to use a shower that's not gross and not actually want to pay to use a gym or a pool that they don't really want to use. So, you know, it's a great place you can just walk in and pay for a shower. It's real straightforward. You don't have to negotiate. Yeah, I love this place. It's in Twist. So if you're not used to public showers, pay showers, you know, this one's pretty clean. You can see I have staged my stuff in advance. You can see that I brought shower flips. I bring these flip flops for one purpose and that is wearing in public showers. Good advice, trust me. Uh, I always pack all my stuff in a bag in advance. You know, I have everything all ready, so all you do is grab your bag, grab your clothes and go. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're standing here and your car's half a mile away and you're like, oh no, I forgot my soap or something. You know, you don't want that to happen to you. Traveler tip, put your wet things on the dash in the sun, especially if they're getting wind. Wind and sun, dry things out. It's a dry place over here in Twist, most of the time. Twist is kind of a colorful place. I recommend this grocery store. There's a freak car parked by it oh man look at that who would drive an internal combustion engine you knew i was gonna say that didn't you i guess it's just not my day <laughs> smoking debris pile right near the charger in the zama and uh construction over by the store construction over at twist so lots of noise both the places i wanted to hang out <coughs> which can make me feel a little more comfortable playing music because I think, well, it's probably better than the sound of hammers and power tools as far as other people being affected. But uh, anyway, I'm about to leave Mizama, a place that I thought I would hang out for a while. I've hung out for about an hour and a half, long enough to get a 100% charge in the car. I had 100% charge, but uh, if I open the passenger, I mean, if I open the driver door, it tends to start the charge up again and just top off a tiny bit. So that's what it's doing now. So I'm going to be out of here in a minute and head over the pass. The E Vagabond video blog is brought to you by the Dao Fawu Monastery, offering spiritual and monastic living in a rural setting.